the internet is a thing. Today we'll be taking a look at some internet lost media. That's right, if something is on the internet, it doesn't mean that it's archived forever. That's completely false given the fact that these ones that we'll discuss and much more exist. Let's begin. MySpace MySpace is a website launched in August 2003 and it's a very old school website that was used to post cringy photos and music projects. Actually some artists got their start on MySpace. The website is also famous for its controversies, like leaking personal information from users without their consent in 2011. In 2015, MySpace was shifting to newer servers and in the process, the data got corrupted and was impossible to recover. Everything posted on the site from 2003 to 2015 was lost. Imagine if that happened nowadays with Twitter or Facebook, that would be catastrophic. Unfortunately, MySpace support team said that they would retrieve old photos and friends, but all music was gone and MySpace couldn't do anything about it. Now, many people from the community are still trying to recover old songs, and more than one terabyte has been recovered. But that's practically nothing because it's way more than that. We're still far away to recover everything, but we all know that every music won't be recovered, it's next to none the possibilities of getting everything back. Jod's Lost Videos Javed Karim is one of YouTube's co-founders, and is infamously known by being the person that made Me at the Zoo, YouTube's first video. It was posted in April 23rd, 2005, and now has over 200 million views. If you go now to Jod's channel, you'll only find Me at the Zoo, nothing else, but at some point of time that wasn't the case. After Me at the Zoo, Jod posted more videos, such as rolling down a hill, but Jod ended up privating or deleting them, and now some of them are lost. I said some because with the help of the Wayback Machine, almost every Jod video was recovered, and now we can finally see Jod's version of Numa Numa in its glorious 240p. No, not gonna happen. YouTube's actual first video? On August 6th, 2020, YouTuber The Techitron posted a video that explains that apparently, Miyata Zoo wasn't the first YouTube video, but actually a series of test videos called Comtest 1 to 5. And apparently, Comcast 2 was the first video on YouTube, because Comcast 1 only came after Comcast 2. On December 8th, 2020, he made a follow-up video saying that the Comcast videos were uploaded to Vimeo, and after 15 years, they were public once again. They were exactly what you thought they were, test videos with peeps, it's like an early version of WebDriver Dorsal. But it was quickly discovered that all of this was a hoax. It made sense that the first videos on YouTube were test videos, but apparently not. It was debunked because in a 2012 panel with Jod, someone in the crowd asked if there was a video before Miyatazu, but Jod said no, Miyatazu was the actual first video on YouTube. Comcast doesn't exist. The Tales of Super John John Tron is one of the most influential YouTubers of all time. Even if his videos only take a while to release, it's always an event when it happens. Before John started the John Tron show, in the 2000s he created the Tales of Super John. These were a series of videos where John told fictional and totally made up stories with a comedic tone. But when John Tron was created, Safari privated the Tales of Super John, and only in 2016 its existence was confirmed by YouTuber the Gamer from Mars, and with his video came small clips of a young John Tron. However, he couldn't release the whole thing because of legal stuff. Also around 2017, two four-second clips were found by Sexy Abraham and Harrison Hopper. On December 21st, 2020, Just Jargon on YouTube made a video discussing the tales of Super John, and he revealed that he had the first two episodes and later he uploaded them on his second channel. But it doesn't end there, there's a third and final episode of Tales of Super John that never resurfaced. Just Jargon, The Gamer from Mars, Harrison Hopper and Sexy Abraham confirmed that they don't have the third episode, it's completely lost. There's nothing about it, no clips, no photos, no nothing. The only way of getting it is if John Tron releases it, but it seems very unlikely. Let's hope that he re-releases it and we finally get the entire Tales of Super John trilogy. The Angry Video Game Nerd, who framed Roger Rabbit original ending. The Angry Video Game Nerd was the pioneer of video game reviews. Almost 20 years later, James Rolfe still continues to make AVGN reviews. The first episode released in 2004 and it's still popular in the modern era of the internet. One of the first episodes of AVGN, the Angry Nintendo Nerd at the time, was the Who Framed Roger Rabbit episode. It's the fourth episode of ANN. 
This review released in 2006 and it was a review of the 1989 NES game based on a Who Framed Roger Rabbit movie and if it's on AVGN, the game sucked. Originally, the episode was going to end with the nerd shouting terrible features of the game and what he would do instead of playing it, typical AVGN stuff that we all love. Mike Mattei on Twitter then posted a screenshot of the scene and James Rolfe later confirmed that the scene was recorded with the mic off, so the scene had no sound, and then he recorded over that scene to save space, because back then he used a mini TV. Well, there is no way it's going to be recovered, but we are not losing much. If it was a whole episode, it would have been worse. Jeff the Killer Original Image Jeff the Killer is no doubt one of the most recognizable creepypastas of all time. It's internet history at this point. The story behind the creepypasta is notorious for being bad and really cliché. It started many creepypasta tropes and is remembered to this day. Alongside the story, it also came an realistic image depicting a white figure with black eyes that's apparently Jeff the Killer. The image has been haunting many people for over 15 years, and no one knows how the original image looked. For a while it circulated a rumor from 4chan of a girl named Katie Robinson that made a post asking if she was pretty, but 4chan being 4chan, they added the photo and turned into the Jeff the Killer photo we all know. But it was debunked, her real name is Heather White. The first time the image was documented was on a Japanese site around 2004 and 2005. The original creator of Jeff the Killer didn't make the image, it's older than the creepypasta actually. No one knows who was the person in the photo. No one knows how it looks, it's been lost for a decade and a half. Many images have been circulating that appear to be the original, but all of them have been debunked. The story of the search is amazing and too big to be discussed here, but I believe that this will be found, we just have to wait. Backrooms Original Image Yes, I said the title of this topic and the previous one in a happy tone because I don't want to shit myself while recording this. It's 11pm. The Backrooms is a creepypasta slash meme created on 2019 about the never-ending maze, a glitch part of the world where every room is the same and there is no end. Even if the original post appeared in 2019, it started to become really popular in 2022. It started on a paranormal board on 4chan, it was a post about the backrooms and it featured this famous image, but no one knows where it came. It was found an earlier version of the image with a JPEG at the end from the random board in 2018. It was also revealed that the image was dated back to 2012 and it was captured with the camera manufactured in 2001 to 2002, so there is a chance that this photo was taken in the early to late 2000s. Alongside that, there is not much that we know. Information about this is very scarce, and we don't know practically nothing about this damn image. To be honest, the only thing I need to know is the location. I'd like to experience the backrooms myself. First time vape shop visit, Twitter cut. Scott Awaz is a YouTube channel created by Scott Wozniak in 2012. He started his mainline series Scott Awaz in 2017, but one year prior he released a skit called First Time Vape Shop Visit. This skit is infamous by being the first time Wozniak said this iconic catchphrase. Hey y'all, Scott here. Hey y'all, Scott here. Hey y'all, Scott here. In this skit, Scott and his cloud cousins go to a vape shop for the first time. Yeah. But when Scott wanted to post this kit to Twitter, he had to trim the video to around 2 minutes and 30 seconds to post it to Twitter. Around this time, Scott wasn't as popular as nowadays, so not many people saw this tweet. In some point of time, Scott uploaded the Twitter cut to his secondary channel, Scott Stash, but he ended up privating it. ENTEB from the Scott Boss Wiki provided the thumbnail of the video from Scott Stash, and according to him, the video was almost the same, just a bit shorter compared to the original. Scott probably privated it because of the simple reason that it was practically the same, so I don't see if he will repost it. But if people ask for it, I'm sure he'll do it. Rooster T's Lost Videos Rooster Teeth is an online video productions company created in 2003, and still to this day they make content. In mid to late 2020, some videos from Rooster Teeth channels, these include the main Rooster Teeth channel, Achievement Hunter, and Funhouse were removed from YouTube and their website. On October 2020, due to sexual allegations involving Adam Kovic and Ryan Haywood from Fun's House and Achievement Hunter retrospectively, some videos that they made an appearance were removed, and some trace back to 17 years ago. 
In total, 23 videos were removed from all Rooster Teeth channels, and currently 19 have been found, one is partially found, and one is completely lost. And there's two videos that are probably streams, so they're more difficult to recover. Five Nights at Freddy's Lost Trailer FNAF is one of the most popular indie franchises of the last decade. Created by Scott Carlson, the series has a lot of entries since the first games were released in 2014. Seriously, Scott was unstoppable. He launched three sequels one year after the first game. To promote the first FNAF, Scott Carlson released some trailers in 2014, but via his Google Plus account, three deleted trailers were found. Two were identified, but there's one called Five Nights that never got identified. The only thing that we have is a screenshot of the skeleton of one of the characters. However, in 2020, it was confirmed that it was just a FNAF trailer that is up on Scott's YouTube channel. Oops, silly mistake, the Five Nights trailer doesn't exist. Camera Head Camera Head is a creepypasta created back in 2009 in the paranormal boards of 4chan. The plot of Camera Head is that a person found a video cassette and a torn envelope in a pile of rocks. In the envelope, there was a note saying, I killed the camera head. Then our main guy got stalked by the camera heads and the content of the video cassette was uploaded on YouTube. The creepypasta got shared around 4chan and it even was featured on the bullshit category of the board due to oversaturation. Then time passed and everyone forgot camera head and when the board got a rebranding, many old threads were gone, including camera head. In August 2020, a user in 4chan posted a link to a YouTube video simply titled Camera Head, and everyone noticed that this video was posted the same day as the original 4chan thread. This was the video mentioned on the creepypasta. Then two months later, Lost Media Wiki user Marden005 found the original Camera Head's transcript. So now the original 2009 creepypasta is finally found. Super Mario 64 Big Star Secret Super Mario 64 Big Star Secret was a screamer video posted by Lotusman17 in August 2007. This video lasted 5 years until its deletion in late 2012. Even if the video didn't last long, it reached almost 700,000 views and it was shared around the internet to jump scare people. The video consisted of a tutorial of how to play as Luigi in Mario 64, but we all know that's impossible, so the video ends with a cafe ad zombie screamer. According to people that have watched it, the video was edited in Movie Maker 2, it was recorded on a flip phone, the colors of the castle and Mario were altered with a level editor called Toadstool Tool 64, the video had a background music but no one can reach the right turn because everyone that watched the video heard different songs. Some recall hearing Dreamscape by Yo-Yo 9 sound system, but some recall hearing Database by Alexander Pearls, the creator of Oo 9 sound system. But either way, the video eventually got muted to avoid copyright. A lot of text made in Movie Maker appears in the video showing steps of how to unlock Luigi, and some include kick a boo, press A on this wall. Yeah, that's right, just kick a boo and you'll receive peak character. According to Lotus, he deleted the video accidentally, but after finding the description of the Facebook version, it was probably deleted because of hate the video received. All we have of the screamer is a thumbnail that was recovered with the Wayback Machine and a reaction video called Little Brother Getting Scared, Late Reaction. It's really low quality and only shows 28 seconds of the original video. But at least it's something, I hope it gets found soon. And that's it, that's some internet lost media for you. When someone says that if something is posted on the internet it's there forever, show them the tales of Super John, that will probably make them think twice. I got some of my information from the Lost Media Wiki, so you need to check it out. If you're watching this, you probably visited the Lost Media Wiki at least once, but you need to check it out again. And I'll see you in the next Lost Treasures.